Welcome to On The Chain. Our boy Pomp was on Liz Clay- Clayman show, one that we've seen John Deaton go on often. And I wanted to play this because I think this gives us a little bit of idea about what exactly is going on here. I mean, let's play this. All right, Grayscale Investments ratcheting up the pressure after its legal victory against the Securities and Exchange Commission exactly one week ago. In a letter sent to the SEC yesterday, Grayscale urged the regulatory body to reconsider its application to turn its Bitcoin trust into a spot ETF. Is a spot Bitcoin ETF going to happen this year? I mean, there's a Hunger Games going on with a whole bunch of different fund companies. We may get some answers when SEC Chairman Gary Gensler testifies in front of lawmakers next week. But until then, here to break it all down and maybe give us a sense of whether it could happen is Pompliano Investments, Anthony Pomp Pompliano. Our boy Pomp. Our studio in a Fox business. What's up, our boy Pomp? Great to have you here in person. It's our boy Pomp. Finally, you're not in a a TV box (laughs) hidden away. I'm glad you're here. Uh, First of all, what do you make of Grayscale's latest win and then the letter that was sent yesterday is the pile on really happening? Yeah. The, the great part about America is when there's disagreements between market participants and regulators, they go to court, they lay out their arguments. These are high priced lawyers on both sides that do the best they can to convince a judge uh, who's right. And the judge came down and they sided with Grayscale in this situation. Uh, now, what the SEC has to decide is, are they going to allow this conversion? But that's not the only part that they actually have to evaluate. They also have to look at the fact that you have other ETF applications that are out there. And so it's kind of this great risk. Do we get the GBTC conversion first or do we get ETF applications? I tend to think that we don't want to have a financial market where regulators are playing referee in the sense of they get to choose winners and losers. Instead, what we want is we want regulators to create fair markets. And so from my personal perspective, the best thing to do would be just approve them all at once. Say GBTC, you can convert BlackRock, uh, the other filers, everyone gets to go. One, two, three, go. Whoever gets the assets gets the assets. Because part of what we've seen in prior ETF applications that have been approved, whoever gets out there first, they get the assets. Yeah, fidelity. I mean, what is more basic and accepted in the world than fidelity? They're applying Wisdom Tree Bitwise, of course, BlackRock, which everybody got geeked up about. And that's when the price of Bitcoin spiked back above 30000 Right now, it's around 25000 and change. Why do you think that is? Look, Bitcoin is a macro asset, and what I think we're really watching here is it's a highly illiquid asset. So about 70% of all Bitcoin that's in circulation is being held by people who over the last year have not sold. And the reason why that's so important is the price has gone up, it's gone down, it's gone back up. They're not selling. And so ultimately what we're watching is, uh, I think, the same setup that we saw in 2020. Going into 2020, there was this kind of inverted yield curve. There were CEOs leaving their jobs. It looked like we were heading towards a recessionary period. COVID happens and we get tons of money printed, but that happened to coincide exactly with the uh, Bitcoin halving. When that occurred, you had demand shock, supply shock, price goes up hundreds of percent. I think that we're watching that exact same thing play out here. ETF application will be the demand shock. The supply shock is coming with the halving and we should go up hundreds of percent again. This is a trillion plus dollar market cap now. Investors are in it. They, some like it. And for the SEC to dig in its heels at this point beyond what their job is to do, and that is protect the investor, starts to look a little strange, but there are some legal minds out there, and I want your opinion on this, who actually are speculating that simply to make their case against a spot Bitcoin ETF, that the SEC would possibly roll back its green lighting of the Bitcoin futures opportunities that they have already put out there. Can you put the toothpaste back in the tube on Bitto and Biddy? I mean, these, these futures trading operations that you could actually participate in now. He who makes the rules can change the rules. And so they definitely wow. could do it. I don't think it's likely that. No. I do tend to think that uh, there's a lot of speculation around this stuff. I do believe we will get ETF applications approved uh, before the end of this year. We've got about 100 days or so left to go. Uh, BlackRock knocking at the door, Fidelity, et cetera, I think really helps. Um, but another key piece of this, and, and I think people kind of are so focused on the ETF application that they're not looking at the macro impact. And one of the things that recently came out is Bernstein came out with this uh, brand new uh, kind of prediction that this stable coin market, these are just dollars on block 
blockchain is going to be about a $3 trillion market cap. Now, the reason why that's important is it's $125 billion today. So they're predicting just dollars alone will go from $125 billion to $3 trillion. If that happens, Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market will likely be $10 plus trillion. We're talking about a market that maybe is just over a trillion today. And so these are huge well, jumps. Like no, there, there are some who remember what happened to Terra and Luna, and those were so-called stable coins, which fell, they broke the buck or whatever. They fell below a dollar. Anyway, Jeff, that's what I really wanted to show right there, because I think I, th I think he's spot on when he says, oh, this thing's playing in my ear. It's driving me nuts. Um, this is really what... Saying. This is what I mean. That the whole the whole thing where he talks about you, if we want the market to explode, you know the best way to do it. Imagine if all these ETFs go right. You've got Fidelity, you got Invesco, you have the Ark Fund. All of them go. They're all competing against each other. Institutional money's flooding in. Bitcoin's going up like crazy. Fifty, sixty, seven. It'll break the all time high. And if you want to see where the that that has sparked the actual next bull run, twenty twenty four. And then you're going to see XRP. So XRP, unfairly, I, I saw some somebody had a comment in here saying they were a true believer. And it's been a you know an S show and everything else. But part of the part of the reason we feel that way is because you know if you were holding XRP or some other altcoins, almost every altcoin saw an all time high. You know the one that didn't yep. see it was XRP uh -huh. because of this damn lawsuit. So it, it really didn't have the op the opportunity to go create that all time high. And if it, if it hits four or five dollars six seven dollars you're like okay so it slides down to three you already know that it's doable that it can hit seven bucks but the fact yeah. that we didn't have that bull run we didn't have that chance i think that's really what that's what's going to change in the next bull run so it's a top five top ten digital asset yeah, yeah it's got to go yeah i you know overall you know we if we look back at the at the way things progressed go back and you can't always look back in history and say it's going to repeat exactly that way Every other digital asset in the marketplace saw big trends up and they kept the momentum. Uh, XRP went the other direction. Uh, but if you track it back to 2017 or, you know, I think 2017, 18 was a real turning point for the crypto market. Uh, mm -hmm. Even previously to that, there was some uh, FOMO on Bitcoin and some FUD on Bitcoin. Uh, but 2017 was the market for Bitcoin and all and all the other assets. This is a short video that Jungle Inc. tweeted out about Chris Larson, and it's just really short. Let's listen to it real quick. Let's listen in. Is the SEC lost on everything that was important to them and important in regulation of the industry? The case still continues. There's there's appeal processes that everybody has the right to do, um, but uh, we think that this is really groundbreaking. Uh, this is the law of the land. Is the SEC lost That's on it. everything that was important? They lost on everything that was important to them. Because that was everything. it. Basically crushed that once they got that. So thank you for Jungle for tweeting that out. I always like to do a shout out there. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.